Hi, this is Ginger Cook. I want to talk about clouds this morning. And clouds are something that go on an awful lot of paintings, whether you're painting a landscape, whether you're painting an ocean. Being able to paint really good clouds is important. And I noticed that a lot of times artists can do everything else. When it comes to the clouds, it sort of messes up. And with, there's some simple tricks I can explain, and we're just going to go through it. First off, I want to give you an idea. This is a painting where you maybe you, have, you see this. This is an ocean scene. We've got clouds in it. And being able to paint these sort of thunder clouds, these cumulus clouds, is kind of cool. So we're going to start with a palette of just on a little styrofoam plate because the size canvas we're using is pretty small. I'm going to do something for the sake of this. We don't need anything very big. This is a Centurion Artist Linen Canvas, 6x8 sheets. It's real, it's real canvas. It's just in sheets and you tear off and it's linen on the back. Do you see that? See how it's linen on the back? And the reason this is nice is it's very smooth. So we're going to start with a, a sheet of that and we're going to start just because it's 6 by 8 inches. We don't need anything that big to explain this. We're going to start with the colors that we're using are white. And you'll notice I put out a log of white. And then we're going to put in phthalo blue. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can sort of see it. Here's phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. And this is sort of confusing people. Why do we need both blues? Phthalo blue is the color of the kind of a tropical blue. It's kind of a turquoisey blue. It's the color of the Pacific Ocean. And you can remember that because phthalo blue starts with P-H-A-L-O. It's actually thylocane blue. And then ultramarine, if you add a little bit of white to ultramarine, like that. You see, that's the color of the Atlantic. Can you guys see the, the difference? Now, side by side, there's, they don't look that different on your palette. And the reason I've sort of circ done a circle and written what's up there, you should too, even if you abbreviate it so you don't get confused about what's what. Now, the next color we're using is raw umber. Just put a small amount of that. Cad red medium. Um, and then I've got a spot for mixing white, and I left it out because a lot of this is one of the secrets. I tell you what, mixing white, or it's a transparent white, and it's called transparent mixing white. It's made by Liquitex. I really like it. A golden makes something called a zinc white, which can can work too. I really particularly like this one. It's sort of a combination of titanium and zinc white, and I really like the transparent mixing white. So here here's our colors, and here's the, the, this is what we're going to use. And we're going to start with, like I said, this small 6 by 8 little canvas. I'm going to tear off a sheet, show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to move, move our little, um, uh, little fr picture frame there. So you can see this is what we're doing. Let me zoom this back out here again, see? So here we go. So this is what we're going to paint. So one of the things you've got to remember when you're doing a painting like this, stick something underneath it so that because um, you, you want to paint the edges. All right, It's not like it's up on an easel. This is flat on a table. We're going to paint the edges. I want to take a brush about like this. This is a ruby satin silver. It's kind of an old one. I like old brushes. It's a number eight. But I really like old kind of frayed brushes. See how it's sort of frayed a little bit? Kind of, It doesn't go to a point anymore. That's great for stuff like this. Now, let's take our small palette knife and let's grab some phthalo blue and some ultramarine blue and mix them together. And I want to do about 2% cad red medium. And I want a really dark sky, so I'm going to put about a little bit more cad red medium. Can you see how much I'm mixing? Let me zoom in. I've got a really good zoom on this camera. This is my new camera, and I've got a really good zoom on it. So you can see this is how much. Now, most people, when they start mixing, they want to put it in the center like you're mix mixing biscuits. Not so. Kind of sneak it on the side, see how it goes. If it's wrong, then um, you haven't wasted all this paint and try to fix it. Now, you see how I'm scraping and squishing. And that's a really, really dark sort of midnight blue. And I'm going to put a little tiny bit more red in it and not very much. Sneak in a bit of that, maybe a little bit more, too much there. All right, so I've got the, both blues, the uh, ultramarine blue, about 50% ultramarine blue, 50% phthalo. And I've got this sort of deep, deep midnight blue. Now, all right, so I'm going to scrape it off the palette knife. Stick that over here. I'm not going to wet the brush. We're going to do an underpainting with this, and we're not going to wet the brush. And what I want to do here, let's see, let's zoom back out so that you can kind of see where we are. We're going to start up here, and, and just here's how you dip the brush in paint. This side and then this side, both sides. Dip the brush in paint. Start about here. Come down and across. 
down and across. And here's where the zoom is helpful. Whoops, other way. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Other way. See me? Okay, so now look. Down and across, down and across, down and across. You're weaving. You see that? You're weaving and across. And if you miss something, so then when you have like a little edge like this, you go over the top of the edge. And if you can kind of see how we're doing that using the whole brush, I can do this very quickly. I can, I don't care how big the canvas is, this is one of my main tricks for, for covering a canvas and doing an underpainting. Let's move this over here. Kind of start here and then spread it up on the edges, down and across. And because it's on both sides, I can even grab a little bit that was, maybe I had too much in the middle, and I'll grab some and bring it over like this. Now we want to come all the way down so far like that. We just keep coming down. Some people when they cover canvases, they start here and then they want to go over here and they want to go over here. No, no, no. We don't want to do that. You want to stay and keep your edges wet. Acrylics dry in about 10 minutes. So it's important that your edges stay wet. And because this is a sort of a, a very, very soft canvas uh, sheet of canvas, you get too much water on this initially, it might want to curl on you. We don't want that to happen. Now I'm out of paint. Now one of the things that is important is don't mix so much at one time. You can always, you can't get it back in the tube. So let's just take the rest of our thalo blue, ultramarine blue, and we know about how much red we want in there now, the cad red medium. And we're going to make, continue on and see I've made another here, another whole nother dark blue here. See that? See that? Cad red medium, ultramarine blue. I'm just going to scrape everything I've got up here and stick it on the plate. It's better to make, make small amounts of things. Let me zoom back out so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's better to make smaller amounts of things than it is to just make big piles that you, that you have. You can, then, then what are you going to do with the paint? So acrylics, if you, if you understand how to mix your colors. Now look, we had no trouble matching that blue and and covering the canvas with it. Now when I get down about, well I think I'll just cover the whole thing. There is going to be some canvas showing through. I like to tell the story of the artist I know in Hawaii and I can't think of her name. You've got to forgive me. It's been some years ago. She painted all her canvases red before she did anything else. And you know, you can do that. Now at the point where you're running out of space for your fingers, just use a palette knife to hold the canvas down. That's certainly a trick that works. You can just use the palette knife. Kind of like when you're using a knife and fork to cut meat or something. Just do like that. All right, now there it is covered. You see that? It's nice and shiny. So what happens next is we put all this stuff away. The palette knife I'm going to use to hold it down. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to use a hair dryer on high heat. And I'm going to hold it, a, gee, about a quarter of an inch away from this. And at the very end, you're going to hear the hairdryer change because I'm going to hit the cold button. And, I'll, and what the cold button does is sort of sets the paint. And if it's still sticky after you've dried it with a little bit of the cold button, which is after the hot, uh, if it's still sticky, it's not dry yet. So all right, so we're going to start with the high heat. Dry the canvas. Here comes the cold, cold air. Big blast of cold air. All right, so that's that's the correct way to dry something. And you see, I can touch it and it's still dry. All right, very good. Now this palette knife, I'm going to just go ahead and dip in water and wipe off. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about clouds. This is really important. Clouds are water vapor. So you might want to just start off, if I was going to say, 
which we're going to do. We're going to do these clouds. You see how we have some sort of faint ones in the background as they come forward? They just keep layering one on top of another. So you might want to consider just generally giving yourself sort of a little raggedy shape here. You're going to say maybe there's a cloud here. Maybe up here there's a little cloud. All right. And then, um, gosh, maybe, you know, this is sort of spontaneous too. And the reason I'm having you do this is that I want you to think about layers of clouds and not cloning shapes. There is a tendency for artists to want to clone shapes. And this is uh, not helpful to you when you're doing clouds because you'll end up making the same cloud over and over again. And someday on one of my other videos, we'll talk about what I think about cloning. But it's, it's an easy thing. I, I challenge you some, maybe to go and, to an art museum and look at some very detailed landscapes. And maybe you'll see where the artist has made the same cloud over and over again. He cloned the cloud. So, all right, now I had this paint on the brush, and I'm going to wipe it all off. I'm not going to rinse it. I'm just going to wipe it all off. And I don't want any water on this, and I'm just going to wipe it off. Now, you know if we went to wash this, I'd get a ton of paint out of this brush. Right now, I'm just squeezing it dry. And I'm going to come into my mixing white. I'm going to grab a little bit on the brush like this. See that? On one side of the brush, kind of on the corner part of it. And I'm going to start here. And I'm going to see if I can't zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. Right in here. Right there. Stop. Stop. Zoomy, zoomies. All right. Here we go. I'm going to start making little circles the size of, oh, a dime. And I'm using just the corner of my brush. And I'm coming up. Now, what's happened? Well, my brush is dirty. That's a transparent mixing white. You see that? So I've got a little bit of a light little area here. So I'm going to say that that's this cloud right here. Now the the trick is like right here, it's not uh, it's it's not wispy enough like here. So I wipe the paint off, and I'll come up here with this brush and just fuzz this edge out a little bit, a little bit, so that it's a little bit out of focus. And perhaps I might even we're kind of big for the brushes. Let's try a smaller brush. I'm going to put a little mixing white now. There hasn't been any paint on this brush, so it's going to act a little differently. Here's a little mixing white on this brush, and it's a clean, dry brush. Now I'm going to go back and shove up some paint here. Do you see that? See how I got this light edge? So it's almost like shoveling snow. So that there's a little light edge up here like this. All right, that's, and what, because we've got the dark underpainting, then you can take a brush and maybe smooth some of this out like this. Just sort of smooth out some of your brush strokes if you want. Just like that. Just smooth them out a little bit. Now let's just back up here and you can see what we've got. See how we've got this cloud here. And the dark of the um, of the canvas is sort of peeking through. Now if that was if I wanted it darker, I might take a little bit of the sky color, put it on the brush, wipe it off, and then come back under here a little bit like this. And while this is still wet, I can shade this cloud a little bit. See that? See how I can kind of shade this cloud maybe? Come under this part like this and say there's another little light edge. And I'm going to say now I've got two clouds going here. And I just shaded this. If I thought it was too dark, I might take a little mixing white. This is not titanium. This is your transparent white. Maybe come up here a little bit more. I've got a little tiny bit on the brush. And maybe I might come up here and say there's some other little cloud formation that's peeking here and I'm barely touching the brush. So here we've got a cloud. And let's go make sure you're going off to the edge. Okay, so how about this one? What would happen if we put a little raw umber with this? I'm going to take a little tiny bit of raw umber and a little mixing white and a little bit of our blue paint over here like this. And I've made sort of this gray c color. And I want to say that there is a gray cloud ooh, right there. And I'm going to wipe the brush off. And come up here like this. And I want this to be sort of this cloud here to be sort of really in the background out of focus. And I might take a little bit more mixing white because that's a little bit darker than I want. And remember, acrylics dry darker. Did you forget that? Don't, 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 they dry darker. Do you see what I'm doing? No, you can't because it's too far away. All right, look, this is the really far background cloud. Here's our gray color. Making this little, Using the side of the brush, using the side of the brush like this. Use this side of the brush. And then coming up here like this and just saying that there is some sort of little cloud shape like this. And this is a different color because with this cloud's in the background. I want to say it's sort of behind this one. 
probably could have done it first. Now, while it's still wet, I'll take a little bit of mixing white, and I will do another little cloud, and I put a little blue on the brush from the background, from our midnight color, and I will put another cloud in front of this one. And the trick with clouds is you want to layer, and I'm, you'll notice that I keep making these little circles. Now the brush is sort of flat. Depends on what angle the brush is at, what you get. All right, now I show it a little bit darker than you're seeing it. Let me darken up my um, screen a little bit. There you go. I think this is a little more realistic about what I've got. Now, all right, so now if I've got that, okay, here's a little mixing white on my brush. What would happen if I just did this and tapped something, wiped off the brush, and then snuck under here and made another little light edge, just like I was shoveling snow and another little light edge here and then pulled the brush this way. See that? So I've got this sort of mist going here and then I did this little tiny light edge. Very careful, just shoving the brush up not to get over this ridge. If I shove over it, we'll lose it. See that? All right, so now we need something back. We're gonna use the dark of the background as part of this cloud. And if we needed to, I could rinse the brush wipe it off on a towel and come up here like this and I could I could come in here like this and I could erase some of this if I wanted this a little bit darker somewhere see that because I haven't dried that cloud yet so if I wanted to put some sort of darker shadow under here just a little wet brush will do that see and that's and I've done it at an angle that's that's sort of pretty all right so now I want to dry these And that's all I'm doing, just a quick dry. Artists never remember with acrylic paints, try drying more. All right, so we're still in mixing white. I've got a little bit on the brush here, and I'm going to come under here like this and do the same thing using this little brush. And I'm going to add another cloud, third cloud, like that. Keep the brush strokes coming down this way as it goes down, a little bit of there. Um, this is too flat. You've got to have this more raggedy. You've got to have this sort of water vapor edge. It's very important to have a water vapor edge. Now I'm going to come down in front of this cloud, take a little bit of mixing white like this. Now see, that's pretty white, but I'll just blend it in using the side of my brush. I'll blend it into this. Now maybe a drop of this background blue. Still have some of that mixed. So let's come across on top of this now. That's the background blue color say that there's this cloud. I'm going to come under here like this because I want this light edge. Then back to mixing white. Back to mixing white. Like that. And start cloud. You know, this is another cloud. Clouds, if you get a chance to just study the sky, there's so many layers of these clouds. There's light and dark areas. You know, I'm going to shove up some of this light color right here, maybe like that. Now, what would happen if I did a little titanium? You want to see? All right, here's a little titanium. I'm going to shove up just a little bit, and it's a lot brighter. And I could then come on down here like this. Say there's some titanium, and I want to leave sort of this dark sort of crevice in here. And you can see that, you can see from this, and if we back up again, you, let me just show you what we've got. See how we're getting the clouds? Now, we've said this cloud's pretty important because we made it lighter. So I need another big cloud in here somewhere. But I'm going to take a little bit of the dark blue paint again, some of that dark blue paint that we had. That's our background color. Look here. See, I'm coming up here with the dark blue. It's our background color. And I'm sort of turning this darker again. See what I did? Now, mixing white. And I'm going to start another cloud right in here because I want one. I've got, I'm just going to tap in some mixing white. I want something like that, okay? Wipe the brush off. Come under here like this. Kind of shove up this edge. And say, here's another cloud that I want to say happened here. Leave the dramatic. Make sure that you've got up and downs and lots of dramatics. Maybe it's coming up this way over here. Here's some more mixing white. We're going to say, here's another edge. That's coming up lighter over here. And if you, the thing about a white edge, if you don't like it later when it dries, you can glaze it back. 
But right now, you just sort of put on some classical music. I wish I had some in the background to, sh to play giant clouds with you. And um, maybe I'll take a little bit of raw umber and mixing white now, just to drop a raw umber, like 1%. Come in here like this, and I want some sort of uh, browner cloud in here. And I want a bigger cloud like this. Let's say this is a bigger cloud. And then I'll take a little bit of titanium and go over the top of this like that. The mixing white was on the was with the raw umber. And then I just did a, right on top of this before I dried it, I did some titanium. I gotta come down in here and say that here's another big cloud. I want this one pretty big and I'm just smudging all this down, sideways brush strokes. You just zoom in and you can see what I'm doing. It's the other way. Here, see? See what I'm doing? I'm kind of coming down this way with it. Everything's coming in this direction. Coming down this way. And maybe now a little tight, little mixing white on top of this one. Say that here's some sort of mixing white cloud. If you were doing a landscape, you'd probably just straighten the clouds off at the bottom. We're just doing a whole, whole painting of cumulus clouds. And I'm going to take a little bit of our background blue color and pull in here and shade some of these, give it some shadows. Um, this comes with practice. What I would tell you is that this technique comes with practice. And it's nice to do it with kind of an old brush because you do a lot of scrubbing with it. See, I want to do something different here. Yeah, there we go. Now, let's put a little more of the dark blue background color in like that and, and just make it a little bit stronger. Come up under here. Let's say that maybe I wanted this bluer right on top of that. And then here's a little mixing white with the raw umber. This is still wet now. So I've got some other different cloud. This is the wet on wet. Sometimes we're doing wet on wet and sometimes you don't. But you've got to, you've got to practice with this to see what you get. As long as you keep the, um, the shading and the tones, this is important. Keep your tones in there. All right, let's just back up. Now what do we got? All right, this one looks, you know how acrylics dry darker? You can't see this one, so I'm going to take a little bit of mixing white on this one and come back and pull this one up a little bit. This cloud doesn't even show up in, 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 once it dried. I don't even see it anymore. So I'm pulling this one back up again. See there? I'm just going to say that there's my cloud, and I might even take a little bit of mixing white and just lighten this edge. Oh, let's zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. I want to lighten that edge because it didn't it didn't lighten, all right? So now I'm going to sneak under here, don't go don't cross over the white, but shove it up in places. Every time you go over white, it gets darker if you have any other color on your brush. And that you can use to your absolute advantage when you're doing clouds. You see I've got this sort of light edge here and I've got this little dark crack that's just sort of coming in here like this. What if I said this cloud crossed over in front of this one? It could. What if this cloud did this in front of this one? Well, it probably wouldn't do that because it's the wrong wrong kind of cloud to do that, but it could do something like this, and I don't like that, so let's fix this one. I want this one in front of that one. There we go, better. All right, something like that. So this is the background. You, we just keep layering forward now. All right, so now we've got these clouds here. As we get down toward the bottom, we want bigger clouds. So I'm going to change brushes. I want a bigger cloud as I get down toward the, the bottom here. I want them a little bigger. And um, so here's some mixing white on my brush. I'm going to come up here like this. This was the original brush that I did the clouds with. And I can get a different brush stroke because the brush is bigger. See what I mean? Depending on the size of the brush stroke, and I'm still in the mixing white. See, let's move this over here. I'm just sort of plopping on a little white here, like that. And that is going, what? well, yeah, then what is she doing with it? Well, then I'm taking the corner of the brush and sort of melting it up into, into here, like that, and then bringing the rest down, like that, and sort of this downward stroke. And let's fix this one. Let's shove this up, just like shoveling snow. You know, if those of you who are living in Florida or something, you're going, what is she talking about, shoveling snow? But basically, mm, let's zoom in and you can see what I'm talking about. You kind of, you've got a little spot of white like this, and let's go real close. I've got this camera that can do that. Look at that. So see this little spot of white. Now I'm starting here, and I'm shoving this and using just this little corner part, 
shovey shovey right like this shoving that edge up and right under here I'm just going to shove this edge up and want to make sure that you're not looking at bow peep clouds with little little perfect hill things maybe I want a little more white so I'll tap a little more white there maybe a little bit of white there too I'll tap something there then pinch the brush off like this wipe it off and come up under here like this and shove that little tiny little edge up there just there you go so I've shoved that edge up coming down here like this with the side of the brush kind of in this brush stroke a little more mixing white maybe in here this is all part of this big cloud down here though so I don't want to get I'm going to say that this big cloud here can have some lights and darks to it but basically the shading of this cloud even down here in the corners is the result of the background color being dark all right, so here we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to come up here like this and say that this cloud's coming up here like that. Here's another one. And this, you don't try to do it exactly like mine, but you got, I want you to get the idea of how this works. The wonderful thing about clouds is they move all the time. You know, something sort of fun to do is to stare up at clouds. Let's sit out there on a chair in, your, in front of your, your house sometime or when you're on a lunch break at work. Lunch break, please. And... Um, Look up at the clouds if you've got some cumulus clouds and you see something. Have you ever, when you were a kid, thought they looked like animals? Well, I want you to try and punch a hole in them with your head, with your mind. Think of a, look at a cloud and say, I need a hole in the cloud right there. And see, and see what, and the clouds are moving all the time. It's really a fun trick. And sometimes your imagination will believe you actually did it. So let's back this up here. All right, see, now, what do we got? Now, mostly we've stayed in titanium white. Would you agree? We, or rather mixing white, that we, the transparent mixing white. We didn't get, we've used very little titanium white. Now I want to emphasize in this, I want to emphasize some lighter clouds right in here. So I'm going to dry this. This is where the titanium comes in in a smaller brush. We'll go back to that other one. I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white. I've rinsed the, rinsed the brush and wiped it off. And I'm going to say that I want this cloud to be a bit lighter than that other one, like that. See there? I want this to be a bit lighter, like that. I want this to be wider. So then if I put this much white on the brush, then I'm still using the side of it. And I'm pulling this white down into this into the cloud like that. Do you see how I'm pulling it down? And I might take a little tiny bit of our background color, like a drop of that, wipe it off, and using the side of the brush here and a little bit of titanium right here. I, I, I want it a little bit more shaded, but I wanted this area here to be a bit brighter. Do you see that? I wanted this cloud here to be a bit brighter, particularly on this edge. And then if that's bright there, maybe we could have a bright one right here. And let's see, do we like this edge? I don't know, do we? Maybe not. Let's start with a, let's try a smaller brush yet. Here's a little brush like this. And sometimes you can, when you're, when you're trying to get just the right amount of stuff, here I'm just using the point of this, and I'm trying to get just this edge very raggedy. And pronounced. I want to say that that's this cloud. So this is where you go back into details. Then I'll take a little bit of blue on the brush, wipe most of it off, and sneak underneath this and pull this down into the rest of the cloud so that I have this edge, because it's titanium, is a bit brighter. See, that's a little bit brighter here. Maybe we've got a little bit brighter one right here. Want a little bit lighter edge. This is where you kind of come back and play with this a little bit and say, what would happen if I had a little bit lighter edge here? And here's the titanium right there. That is your um, titanium white. I'm going to say that I want this lighter here, using the side of the brush to kind of bring this down. And if I want it darker, if you've saved enough of this background color where you can tap on a bit here, 
if you feel like you've got to shade this a little bit and still have some contrast because your center of interest is going to be where the lightest light and the darkest dark is. So you see how our eyes are moving around to this part of the clouds as opposed to down here because we've got the lightest light up in here. And we, and we could do a trifecta here by coming over and saying that there was some sort of little light edge right here. And then using the side of the brush, just going to say that that's some sort of little lighter cloud right there. Then the shapes change, right? The shapes can change. That's okay. Here's a little bit of the dark background color. I'm going to match that up there. So, all right, so now I've got this. This is the area where we've got the darkest, lightest light, the darkest darks. I can come back and add. I can make it more dramatic by adding a little bit of the dark. If we've lost anybody, anywhere, any part of our dark background, we dried it, remember? So you can put a little of the dark background and darken this all up. See how we did that? Just came back in here and darkened this little edge up here. So I've got a little pattern going, kind of like this little area right in here. Got a little pattern going like that in between these clouds like that, saying that that's some sort of little dark area in here. And then if that's too much, then I'll take a little mixing white and just oh, lighten that up just a little bit. You can't have too, you know, you can, you can get too many layers, but not often. All right, so here's some titanium if we wanted to lighten this up in here a little bit like that and say that this is some sort of lighter titanium cloud and I'm using the side of my brush now never crossing over that very, very light edge like that. And then come back here. Maybe dry that real quick. This is too wet. Just dry this. Come back like this. There we go. Just say that that's a darker, darker cloud edge. That is our darker clouds. And, you know, we've really, I, I really kind of like what we've got here. We've got the dark up here on the corners. We've managed to do some pretty nice light things here. Maybe we could do something up in here like this. You know, for, for me, I could spend hours just playing with clouds. I suppose there's a point in time where you want to say, enough's enough. But you could, oh, but I do want to show you one trick. Let's suppose we've got a really light cloud like this. And we don't want it this light. We, you, you, this, this little light spot's taking your eye right off the canvas. Would you agree? So let's just show you what happens if you did that. Suppose you've got some sort of little light cloud because you got carried away. You figured out how to do it. <laughs> and now, now you're going for it. Okay? So you're saying, that looks nice. I love it. Okay? But suppose you wanted to glaze that back. Let me show you. First you dry it. And this is going to take a bit of drying. Now, in acrylics, a glaze is anything that doesn't have white on it. It can be any color like a tea stain that has no white. So what I want to do is I want to take a bit of our background color here and pull it over here like this. See that? Where it's just, just water and the background color. And I'm just going to, just going to, uh, this is called glazing, where I'm just going to very gently um, take a clean brush, I think maybe uh, cover that white. Now I'm going to take a clean brush and that we didn't get quite get the white dry but that's how you glaze something back. If it's too if it's too light make sure it's dry then you can glaze over it with another color. So when you're looking at your clouds what if you wanted just for the fun of it and I'm just say, what if you wanted some streaks, some sun streaks. So I'm going to take a clean brush kind of a wide one, wipe it off. Maybe I'm just going to do like this like that. See, if you wanted something like this, and if you wanted some sort of sunburst, this is mixing white. You put it on one side of your brush, very flat, wipe it off, and then just the strokes like that. And you can have maybe some light, light coming down here if you want to say that some sort of light was coming down and touching those clouds right there. And if you said that happened, then I suppose you'd have to sort of if you're going to do that, then you'd probably have to lighten this edge up a little bit too. 
to make that a little more believable. If you're saying that that some light hit it, then you got to lighten that edge up. That's basically, you know, so, something you can do with clouds. And then maybe back down in here, let's take a little bit of dark. This is our background color. And let's let's just darken up this corner a little bit. Look, look what happens when you do that. And this is our background color. So if you're playing with clouds, I'm using the side of the brush here. If you're playing with clouds, and here's a little mixing white while it's still wet. If you're pl oh boy, you can just keep painting them, can't you? But you want to do lights and darks and shadows. Get get that. Lights and darks and shadows. Get that. Lights and darks and shadows and just keep pulling. You can keep pulling clouds down. This is a, such a nice layer of clouds. It's all coming down here like this. And then let's see, a little bit more mixing white because I'm using up my paint. Move this paper out of the way like this. Oh, to do is just to this is the edge. This, this this little out of focus edge is what you really are concerned with, and you want to make sure that you've got that. Darken your corners. That's always a good idea in painting. Darken your corners. It forces the eye into the center. All right. So I think that's a pretty good light. I think those are some pretty good clouds, and, and I kind of like what we've got. I might just give it one one deep dry. One deep dry. And just say, is there anything else I would want to do to these? If I could do something else, I have a lot of ultramarine blue in these. It seems like l l more than phthalo blue. It doesn't. So if I wanted to change something, and that's the thing I want. To, this is why I put this on YouTube. You can see it. Let me get out my phthalo blue. And the paints I'm using today are Matisse structure. You want to make sure you're using professional acrylics, or it's just almost pointless. Professional acrylics. Why? This is raw umber white and phthalo blue. A little bit of raw umber. White and phthalo blue. And it's right here on the side. I'm using the side of my plate here. Let me just zoom back out so you can kind of see it. All right, here we go. Raw umber, white, and phthalo blue. Can you guys see that? It's right up here on the side of my brush. That is a different color cloud. Let me put a little bit more raw umber in it. If you're going to put any kind of shadows or anything in clouds, we've got this pretty monochromatic, but if I wanted to change, we're still in the same blues, but if I wanted to change something, like right in here, and I'm going to add some more mixing white with this and lighten it up. If I wanted to change colors in, say, one of our, our main clouds, I might just add either more phthalo blue or more uh, ultramarine somewhere. And this has got the little bit of raw umber in it. To keep it now, see how we just sort of changed it, changed that blue. Now I'll come back with a little titanium and go over this and lighten this cloud up a little bit in here. And it kind of grayed it out a bit. Going to gray it out here and then come down here with our dark, our dark again, that dark foundation color like that. Now when you've got two things like this, just take your brush, pinch it like this, pinch it. And use the side of it and smudge them in. Use the side of it and smudge it in like that. There you go. So that's a, that's one way to add another color. See, that's got a little bit more color to it. So if you don't want, if it seems a little bit all one color, that's one thing you can do. You see, this cloud's got a little bit more something in it. I feel when I look at this, and this is one of the things that you know you've got to just sort of do when you're doing clouds, is where, what else could I do and not ruin the effect? I think I still need something right in here. Right in there. Same thing, wipe the brush, side of the brush, wipe the brush, and then smudge it out. I need this cloud smudged out into here like that. So I wanted another, another layer of dynamic clouds right there. And that's uh, and then smudge this little area out. Ooh, right in there like that. Take the side of the brush and smudge this out. Just push down. I'm pushing down pretty hard, smudging that out. So I've got these two areas that are lighter. Back in here like this. I want to retap in my white. This is what you have to do. Retap it in. Now pull it down like this. 
See how I'm pulling it, kind of lightening up this cloud, right, like this? I wanted these clouds a little lighter, these two clouds maybe a little lighter right in here, right like that. I'm going to lighten this one right in here because this is where I say I wanted my center of interest. So I'm back into the mixing white because it's my transparent white. If I want to always use that first, I'm going to lighten up these clouds right here while they're still wet. Right there. Just touch that a little bit. And then, oh, I like that a lot. So let's just say I did that. And then if I did that, what would happen if I did this? Because now I want to bring the height up of this. Let's say to bring the height up here behind that cloud. And that's kind of, when you're talking about clouds, a lot of it's feeling. It's what are you feeling? How are the clouds feeling to you? Do you feel like you've got enough in here? Does this need to be lightened up here? Would that, would that look better if this edge were lightened up just a little bit? You can do that. This is all mixing white. This is all transparent mixing white. And that's a wonderful thing to learn how to use. And that's how we do clouds. Now let me just put the little uh, folder over it like that. See? I guess I'll back it up just a little bit. And I'm going to look at that and say, there's our little mat board on it. How, how do my clouds look? I think they look pretty awesome. But you know what? You could, I tell you what, I could keep painting. I could keep painting on these. You know, I could sit there and say, what, what happened right here? Just, just look at that. Just This is the artist in you. This is the artist in you going, yeah, but I needed that. I'm looking at this in the picture. Use the side of the brush now and, and just soften that line out. See that? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So I, I like that better even yet. So again, it's not so much what I painted, but it's the technique of painting them. That's it. And I hope this was, if you're having fun with these lessons, check me out on um, gingercooklive.com. I have a library of over 90 recorded lessons on how to paint. We've, we've got some really, you know, it's really reasonable. Um, and, and you can kind of watch it at your leisure, and everything from clouds to, to horses to butterflies to landscapes to trees. And um, we're even doing a special o ocean one, too, a master series on oceans with a, on a, YouTube, with a YouTube password. So check me out. Thanks for watching. Um, this was great fun. Look for my next uh, uh, videos and, and uh, fan me on Facebook, Ginger Cook Live, please. And feel, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I love it when I see that you subscribe. Email me if you have questions, ginger at gingercookstudios.com. Thanks.